In this lecture, I'm going to classify matter and break down all matter eventually into the individual atoms that make up all pieces of matter. So in any case, let's start with all matter. And a general definition of matter is anything that takes up space. So we'll put that down. Anything that takes up space. Now, you should be writing this down in your worksheet that you should have. If not, you should go to my website and download it and add it to it. So we're putting anything that takes up space is matter. Obviously, the more matter you have, the more space you take up. And matter, of course, breaks down into the smallest pieces of matter that we'll deal with this in this course, atoms. Okay, so we break down matter. We break down matter into either homogeneous or heterogeneous. That's the first breakdown. So throw these arrows into your worksheet. Okay, so all matter, we'll circle it because I feel like circling, okay? So all matter is broken up into either homogeneous matter or heterogeneous. Now what the heck is homogeneous? Well, homogeneous, as you might guess, homo is same, means that the pieces of matter all are the same throughout. So we would say the same throughout. And heterogeneous matter, okay, we'll just put the definition above here, is different. Different throughout. It's not an even amount of things. Okay. Now, let's focus on things that are heterogeneous first, because there's only one thing. The only thing that is heterogeneous pieces of matter is a heterogeneous mixture. Now, the word mixture means that we have two or more things that we're going to call a substance. We're going to figure that out. Two or more substances that are not chemically bonded. So a mixture, we'll just put that down, is two or more different substances that are not bonded. What does that mean? Well, if I take a chair and a desk, or a bunch of chairs and a bunch of desks, and I throw them in a room, I've got a mixture of chairs and desks. The chairs and the desks are different. They're not chemically bonded. They're just pushed into, into each other. So mixtures, or just pieces of matter that are put close to each other, but they're not bonded to each other. So if I was to draw a mixture of two things, let's make this a circle. All right, this is a, one type of circle. These are the same circles, and these are different circles. Right now, I've got a mixture because I have what? Two different types of circles, right? We have this type of circle, and then we have this type of circle. Okay, two different types of circle. They're put in the same vicinity, and they're not chemically bonded. Okay, and that's what a mixture is. Think about a salad, think about seeds in a watermelon. All of these represent heterogeneous mixtures. Most mixtures are heterogeneous. They're not the same throughout. If you think about um, your room, you have all kinds of clothes in one area. You might have socks in an area. It's not the same throughout. It's a mixture because there's two or more substances that are not bonded. They're in close proximity. So when you think of matter just being haphazardly placed, it's usually a mixture and usually heterogeneous. Examples of heterogeneous. We can do topsoil. We can do seeds in a watermelon. Seeds in a fruit. Okay. What other things are heterogeneous? Well, sand and water. Sand and water really don't mix, they separate, and they don't really bond, okay? Now, I did mention a word substance. So what is a substance? Now you notice, all matter is either heterogeneous or homogeneous. Well, my friend in chemistry, 
homogeneous matter, if it's a homogeneous piece of matter, it can either be a substance or it can be a mixture. Now, we just talked about a mixture being two more different substances. So let's go to the substance. A substance, by definition, is either a compound or an element. And as you can see by the structure here, it is always homogeneous. So if I've got compound, it's the same throughout. If I've got an element, it's the same throughout. Now, what is an element and a compound? Well, an element, let's start with that, and we should know from the periodic table we have about, okay, 118 different chemical symbols on our periodic table. So we have 118 different types, different types of atoms. So an element is essentially is a group of the same atoms. Now, how do we know they're the same atoms? Well, we know they're the same atoms because we give them a different chemical symbol. Carbon is a carbon atom. It's given a C. Gold is given an AU, okay, for the Latin word aurum because of its gold color, rising sunset, uh, rising sunrise, I said. <laughs> okay, and then we have Mercury is HG, another Latin word for liquid hydrochlorine, for liquid silver. But in any case, these are different atoms denoted by different capital letters. Okay, and same atoms get the same symbol. So if I'm a carbon atom, as Jason Moratz would say in one of his songs, I am made up of only atoms that are made of carbon. Now what makes carbon unique from, let's say, gold and silver? They have a unique number of protons. We'll talk more about this in the next unit, but when you have the same number of protons, you are the same element. So let's go to the periodic table for a second. This periodic table of elements that I just posted here is the same one in your reference table that I will soon be giving you in class to have, hold and cherish and love forever. And in this periodic table, you'll notice that carbon is, is, cent is, is, is centered here. And let's look at it up close and personal. It's got a C. And you notice it's got an atomic number. This is what makes the element unique, six protons. So the atomic number is what we look for. The atomic number, my friend, in chemistry is actually the number of protons. So when I ask you, and I will, how do atoms differ? They differ by their protons. And if you look at different ones, let's go to gold, okay? And let's find gold, AU, right there. You can see, hopefully, that it's got 79 protons. Mercury's got 80. Every single element listed, which is a group of the same type of atom. So if I've got tin, which is also called stannum, okay, in Latin, it's got 50 protons. Nobody has the same number of protons than that. So every single symbol has a unique number called the atomic number. Carbon has six, okay? And the periodic table goes in order of the element's atomic number, which is the proton number. So every element has a unique symbol, which is associated with a unique number of protons. So when I ask you, how do atoms differ? It's the number of protons. And if I have copper atoms, they must have 29, only 29 protons. Let's go back. So an element is a group of the same type of atoms. So if I was to make, and we love to do models because we're dealing with things that are so small. When I say I have the element, let's say, carbon, we know from the periodic table it's got that atomic number six. It's got six protons. So we can't really draw atoms, but we can draw models that help us think about these things. So if I was to draw a model of an element, I may draw a box of, let's say, red circles. And each red circle would represent carbon. And if you think about it, this box has carbon atoms in it. All of the symbols would be the same. As to mean, they all have the same, they're the same type, which means they have the same number of protons. We were using a model. So this box, of course, is homogeneous. Why is it homogeneous? 
it's made up of the same things throughout. Now, an element is a group of the same type of atoms. The smallest unit or the smallest thing of an element that gives its individual properties is exactly, okay, the atom of carbon. Once you break an atom, and we can, into the quarks and gluons, and there are things that are beyond the scope of this course, you lose the individual properties of carbon. Carbon atoms give the element carbon its physical and chemical properties. So if you've got a group of them, we say we have an element. Of course they're homogeneous because they're made up of the same atoms. Okay? Now, a substance, as you can just see, is always homogeneous. And it's made up of an element, a group of the same atoms, or a compound. Now, a compound is made up of, let's say, um, a group of the same molecules. Molecules, I can do this. And molecule, by definition in this course, is two or more atoms bonded. Two or more different atoms bonded, I need to say. So two or more different atoms bonded. Now notice that's different from a mixture. Mixture, if you remember, or two or more different substances, and that could be what now? That could be a atom, that could be elements or compounds that are not bonded, just close proximity. Notice these things are not bonded, not touching, they're just in close proximity. So a molecule is two or more different atoms bonded. What does that mean? Well, we know that water is H2O. If we draw a particle diagram, we use a model to understand it, stand us, we have one oxygen, let's make the oxygen this blue circle, and let's make the hydrogen the red. And you can see this is a molecule. This is a group of atoms that are touching, they're showing bonding. Now, one of these is a molecule, but we never really have one molecule of water. We never talk about that because it's too small. So when we have a group of the same type of molecules, the molecule, we call this group of the same type of molecules a compound. So the smallest unit of a compound is the actual molecule. Let's put a box here. And we would give this name of the box called a compound, made up of the individual unit called the molecule. So the molecule, let's just circle that, is this exact particle of two or more atoms bonded. The entire group of the same molecules, notice the word same, molecules, remember this same molecule? That's what makes it what? Homogeneous, okay? This is a compound. So when we say we have the compound water, what we're really talking about is a group of the same type of molecules, okay? And what makes it homogeneous is that, of course, they're made up of the same particles. Now look at the whole box. The box is made of the same thing, each particle. Now, particles can be a group of atoms bonded or individual. But you can clearly see, hopefully, that elements are homogeneous because they're made of the same atoms, and compounds are homogeneous because they're made of the same molecules. All right? Now, they're made up, and each molecule is two or more different atoms, and they're bonded. Now, the one thing we can say about compounds that are different is that all compounds can be broken down into elements. Couldn't this H2O be broken down into the individual, let's say, oxygens and the individual um, hydrogens? And the answer is yes. And this would be a chemical change. So compounds can be decomposed, can be broken down into the final smallest pieces of matter, which we call elements. So compounds can be broke, are broken down into elements. Now, what is an element? If you remember, an element is a group of the same type of atoms. 
So that's the element, in this case, hydrogen. And these two is the element, okay, oxygen, let's say. All right. So that's how it goes. You notice elements, they cannot be broken down into anything simpler. They're already the simplest form of matter. So the smallest piece of matter that has an own individual property, melting point, boiling point, combustibility, is the atom. Okay? We can talk about the individual atom, but most of the time we refer to element, which means a group of the same atoms. All right? So all compounds can be broken down, but elements cannot be broken down. Okay? Cannot. That's important. Why? Because they're already the simplest form. They're already what? Free atoms. Compounds, although homogeneous, right, because they're a substance, they have made up of the same molecules, the bonds could be broken chemically, right? It's a chemical change because we're breaking bonds, okay? And that's how that works, all right? Now, getting back to one last piece of this is it's something that's homogeneous that's not a substance is a homogeneous mixture. This is an important one. You notice we talked about a heterogeneous mixture. A homogeneous mixture is different. A heterogeneous mixture is two or more substances in close proximity that are just not equally mixed. A homogeneous mixture is two or more different atoms or compounds or elements mixed but not but evenly mixed. An even mixing of atoms and compounds makes something called a solution. A solution is an even mixing because we'll learn later they attract each other in a certain way. And we write solutions with a designation aqueous. Okay? For instance, if I have sodium chloride, which is, if you can guess it, what is that? A compound or element or a mixture? If I write sodium chloride, you may say, oh, I don't know. Well, sodium and chloride are in a chemical formula. In a chemical formula, they are a compound. How do I know it's a compound? Two or more different atoms. I have sodium and chlorine. You may say, Mr. Grotsky, how do I know they're two different atoms? Two different capital letters means two different chemical symbols, and two different chemical symbols means two different atoms with two different numbers of protons. So this is a compound. Okay, and what's unique about compounds, this is very important, they always have a unique ratio, and I should write this. Compounds, and I'll put this down here, okay, always are, always have, I should say, a unique chemical formula. That's important. Water is H2O, always. There's always an exact proportion of hydrogen to oxygen. It's called law of definite proportions. Mixtures, like a homogeneous mixture, a solution, or a heterogeneous mixture, do not really have chemical formulas, and they can be made of a concentrated or a dilute. Think about mixing sodium chloride, table salt, into water and it dissolves, and it makes an even solution, a homogeneous mixture. Guess how we write that? We write NaCl aqueous. Aqueous tells me this compound was mixed with water. So we would have the compound NaCl, and we would have water evenly mixed. Notice these are not bonding, so it's a mixture. And because they're evenly mixed, we call it a solution, and we give NaCl the aqueous at the end. NaCl, aqueous at the end, to tell us it was mixed with water. And anytime you see aqueous, it means it's been dissolved completely. And we call that a solution. So homogeneous mixtures are solutions. Sugar dissolving in water is a solution. Air dissolving in air is a solution, evenly mixed. Okay. But, important here, mixtures can have different amounts. You can have a lot of sodium chloride mixed with water or a little bit 
okay, which would be a concentrated solution, and you can have a little bit of sodium chloride mixed with water. So you can change in mixtures, proportions, any way you want, but a compound only has the exact amount of atoms bonded. Very, very important. Okay? Now, so that's how it breaks down. And these are important definitions, but you have to be able to visualize them, okay, with models. Very important that you can visualize this and take. These are not just, um, you know, definitions to memorize. They're different def definitions to understand. Now, one last thing. A substance is not a mixture. And that's important. Let's just make that a different. A substance is not a mixture. And the reason is, think with me for a second, a substance is either something compound made of the same type of molecules, or it's made up of a what? It's made up of the same type of atoms called an element. A mixture is two or more different substances in close proximity, not bonded. If you have two or more different things, how can you be a substance? Isn't a substance only one thing? That thing could be same type of atoms or the same type of molecules. A mixture is going to have two or more things or two or more, th or two or more substances mixed. Okay, let's put this to practice and let's walk through a couple of these things in the back here. Okay, now we're going to use some models here to help us with this. I want you to take the back side now and I want you to figure out who the element is. Now, understand that different shapes are different types of atoms. Now, we know that atoms differ by their proton numbers, but now we have what? Their shapes. So let's figure out who the element is. Now, when I say element, what does that mean? A group of the what? Same type of atoms. In this case, the same type of shapes. Only one box here is made up of the same type of shapes. And you haven't guessed it yet, it's B. You can make this called the triangle atom, and the rest are triangle atoms because they all are the same type of atoms. So using models, you can't look at this and say how many protons is in the triangle. You can't do that. All right. So the same shape is the same type of atom. Who's a compound? Well, compounds are made up of two or more different atoms bonded. It's or it's a group of the what? Group of the same molecules. Molecules are two or more different bonded. So C is the answer. This is a molecule. Looks like a toilet seat cover, but a toilet seat, but hey, notice one square and one O together and a bunch of the same type of molecules gives me a what? A compound. A bunch of the same type of atoms gives me an element. Okay, who's a mixture of elements? Now a mixture of elements would be what? A mixture of well, mixture of elements. Now, elements are atoms. But if you have a mixture, mixture means you have two or more different types of things. And these things are substances or elements. So two or more different types of atoms. Just atoms. You look, A would be your answer. A is one type of element. This is a group of the same type. And then you have a what? Another type here. And there's a mixture. And who do you think would be a mixture of compounds and elements. Who has made up a free what? Uh, just the uh, same type of atoms and made up of molecules. So where is there molecules, two or more different atoms bonded, and free atoms? It has to be a mixture. That means these things aren't bonded to each other. Look at number D. Look at letter D. This is a certain type of atom, different type of atom, different type of atom. So these are elements three different elements there, and different compounds. Okay, E is different what? These are different, this is one molecule of one compound, right? First compound, and these are the second, so this would be a mixture of compounds. And that's why A is not right. I'm not reading very carefully. A is a, not correct, number four, I'm sorry, number four, would be a mixture, it'd be E, sorry, if you were screaming at me. So a mixture of elements is A, mixture of compounds is a mixture of two more different molecules. And that's what E is, okay? The rest, please finish on your own. See how you do with that. And I'll see you tomorrow.